Okay, our second round of what's in the mason jar, were you able to guess? It is chicken bone broth, which we will be making today in the crock pot. So it's a lot of good nutrition, lots of flavor. You can use it in place of water for a lot of recipes. Um, very, very nutritious and very easy to make at home. I hope you give it a try and I hope you guessed right. Hello, today on Spirits Freedom Farm, we are going to make bone broth. Okay, so today we're going to make bone broth, another very simple, nutritious recipe uh, that doesn't require much at all. Uh, the main ingredients are bones and water and heat, and that's all you really need. Uh, there are a few other things that you can add, which I'll talk about along the way, but today we're going to make it in the crock pot. Super simple. I have here, they're still frozen, but it doesn't matter, they'll thaw in time, a chicken back. If you have a chicken that you've roasted or some legs or something that you've made and you have the bones left over, you can put those in. Uh, anything else like that that you have, chicken feet are great if you can get chicken feet wherever you get your meat. Um, this is a stewing hen. All a stewing hen is is a retired laying hen, so they're a little tougher than a regular chicken. I just add that in for a little more flavor and when the meat cooks down I have some meat for the dogs but it's um, you don't have to have any meat just the bones are really required so I'm going to put those into the crock pot super simple and then our other ingredient water I've got filtered water here that uh, we just want to cover up the bones until the crock pot is full and that's probably about all we're going to fit in, quite three quarts. Uh, some people will put vegetables in here, which is great. Um, some people don't like vegetables. It will add a different uh, nutrition profile with the vegetable uh, nutrients in there. It will uh, could make your broth cloudy. Some people don't like that. Honestly, I don't put vegetables in there because it gives me more room for water. <laughs> and so I end up with more broth. Um, and that's why I don't. Uh, if I do put vegetables in, I try to avoid alliums like onions, leeks, and so forth, so that uh, I can give anything from it to the dogs without causing them any harm. So, bones, water, and another thing that's nice to put in there is a little bit of apple cider vinegar. Uh, this is uh, an organic apple cider vinegar, and what it will do is it will help break down the nutrients in the bones. It will help leach out some of those nutrients um, some of the other things, and I just, you don't, I don't do a measurement, I just a splash, you know, some, some vinegar, doesn't really matter how much, it's just, uh, just to help draw the nutrients out of the bones. They, uh, in addition to the nutrients from the bones, there is also collagen, chondroitin, glucosamine, all of those things in the bones um, that are good for you, that help, help you feel well and, and stay limber. Um, so that's good. The vegetables you can put in there, not necessary. The vinegar is not necessary. It's just nice to have. Uh, some people will even add gelatin to their broth. Again, it's not really necessary. Uh, there is gelatin in the bones. Um, some people like to make sure that their broth gels uh, when it's cooled. Again, that's not necessary um, in order for it to be nutritious. So, okay, we're gonna put this on high for a short time, an hour or two until it gets hot. Then we're going to turn it down on low and let it stay hot, maybe simmer a little bit, and uh, for 24 to 48 hours. And then we'll take a look at that. We are going to finish up our broth. The uh, crock pot has been simmering and bubbling for about a day and a half, and so we are going to, uh, to see what we've got in here. I let it cool for a couple of hours, turned it off, so it would be a little bit easier to handle. Uh, even on low, it gets pretty warm, so I'm going to get rid of the, the lid here. And we're going to start with taking out the bones that we have in here, and as well as our little retired layer hen. And as you can see, it falls apart pretty easily. A nice slow cook in there, even though it's a kind of a tougher hen. Um, it does fall apart from that slow cook. Get 
get rid of those as much as possible, just to get, get it as much as we can out of the way. And I'm going to go back through these. You can see they're still steaming a little bit, but I'm going to go back through these, these bones and get off the meat, being very careful to have no bones left behind. I go through it very carefully. Um, and the dogs will enjoy that as a snack. I can put this into the freezer and little bags and, and top dress their, their meals with that. So we're going to set that aside for now. Okay, we'll get this uh, bottled up into our jars here. We'll just leave that in the jars. It'll last, you know, for a week probably in the jars, but uh, we usually have it gone before then. Um, you can use this to cook rice, you can use it uh, just to drink as a broth, you can use it as a base for soup, anything that you might use water in that would be good for a flavor or to have like a little bit of a flavor to it instead of just plain rice uh, would be an excellent choice. Now I usually pull, pull these up close, I use a funnel to make sure I'm getting as much of it as possible in there and a strainer just to get out any other little bits of meat or, or bone or skin that might be in there. Um, I have found that I do not do a very good job at doing this completely cleanly, but we'll do our best. These Having these tools in place does help quite a bit, so I'm not making too much of a mess. And then one thing you can do, if you don't want, there will be fat that will rise to the top on this broth, and if you don't want the fat, there are a few things you can do. You can um, wait for it to rise to the top and as it cools it will solidify and then you can just scrape it right off of the top there. Uh, also you could get one of those little gravy separators, it's like a measuring cup where the spout goes to the bottom and once the fat rises to the top you can pour it out and leaving the fat behind. That's an easy thing to do as well. So. One more here, jar ready, and I will need another jar. So from, from what I poured into the crock pot, I will have at least three quarts of broth. Nice, yummy, golden broth. Now, there are still a few little uh, minute particles here of meat that have gone through the sieve. We don't worry about those. Those will settle in the bottom, so you can, as you're using the broth, you can leave them at the bottom if you want. If you don't want to have those in there, it's not a big deal. Uh, or um, you can filter with something smaller, like a coffee filter, butter muslin, or a, you know, a flour sack cloth, if you want to. Um, I don't worry about it too much. It's not a big deal. And because we today we are not going to be canning this broth, we don't have to worry about headspace or anything. Just and we're not going to be freezing it. So we just fill up the jar as far as we can and uh, put a lid on it. And into the refrigerator it goes. Please visit the blog post linked in the video description below for more information about this video and the supplies used.